begin in Ethiopia, where the death toll from a landslide at a rubbish dump in the capital has risen to more than 60, and there are fears it may still go up. Rescue officials are still searching for dozens of bodies trapped under the kosher landfill. CGTN's Girum Chala has this update from Addis Ababa. Dozens of makeshift homes are buried under the mountain of garbage behind me. People have been dumping their rubbish here for decades. It's believed around 150 people were here when the landslide took place on Saturday night. Dozens of people are buried under tons of waste, as you can see behind me uh, there. People have been making a living by picking through the rubbish dump for useful items. Some had even made permanent homes for themselves around here. It's believed children are among the dead. Search and rescue operations continue here, but rescue workers face a tough task. Bulldozers have to carefully remove the rubbish uh, over there. The heavy machinery could cause further slides as well. For now, they operate in the hope of finding survivors. NATO is touching down in southwest Florida. This happened overnight, and this was the scene in Punta Gorda where an EF-1 tornado touched down on Aspen Road East. The storm going through one family's yard, destroying their barn, sending chunks of metal flying, even cutting their horses loose. A lot of memories of this barn I had ever since I was 13. Now it's gone. Went out with him. We and the other horses were loose, running around, and it's very dark. Well, the storm also flipping the family's truck over on its head. All the family's animals are expected to be okay, though one duck was lost. The family says they're working to clean up the mess and rebuild. China's National Observatory has raised its orange alert for frozen roads in the country's western Tibet autonomous region. A snowstorm and frigid temperatures have led to road and highway closures. A blizzard swept the Shikaze, Ali and Shanan areas on Friday and Saturday. Snow drifts were 30 to 50 centimeters deep in the urban areas of several counties in Shikaze. Well, the power supply in downtown Jilong was also temporarily cut down. Local authorities are clearing the roads, so they also distributed food and livestock feed in advance to help villagers graze for the snowstorm. Maurice Christine, good evening. It is low tide here, but high water on the Great South Bay, where streets flooded and folks were forced to stay inside. Cars caught in salt water, a big problem. The rainy, wintry mix melted, and even several hours after noon's high tide here on Suffolk's south shore, streets in low lying areas were impassable. All eyes are on that massive storm. Take a live look at Wrigley Field in Chicago. The snow starting to come down right now, the roads messy. There this morning, they're bracing for up to half a foot of snow today. Highway havoc in the Midwest, a late winter storm slamming millions from Iowa to Minnesota. Awful. I didn't expect it to get this bad. It's intense. So crazy. Plummeting temperatures, freezing freeways, sending cars sliding off the road and into each other. The treacherous conditions causing this 24 car pileup outside of Minneapolis. Wind and waves from Lake Ontario along with freezing temperatures engulf this New York house in ice. Surprisingly, this isn't out of the ordinary. Delays in the Twin Cities as airlines have scrambled to de-ice planes is stuck on the tarmac. A frigid blast blowing across the region overnight, dumping close to 10 inches of snow from the Dakotas to Iowa. Another 24 inches expected in some areas by Wednesday. But merciless sub-freezing temperatures, disastrous near Detroit. 65,000 people in the area still without power. And officials now say carbon monoxide poisoning from generators have left two people dead. In this northern Detroit home, a mother and her two young children hospitalized. This morning, across the Northeast, 60 million residents are bracing for the winter wallop as it barrels.
Now to Peru in those tragic mudslides, the death toll rising there following intense rains that have left thousands homeless, but some heroic rescues giving many hope. Here's ABC's Marcy Gonzalez. In the fast moving muddy water and piles of dangerous debris, Hay una persona ahí. a woman almost washed away. As she tries to free herself, her hair seemingly gets stuck before she finally pulls herself to safety. One of many lives narrowly spared from Peru's raging flooding and mudslides that officials say have killed more than 70 people so far this year and left more than 70,000 people homeless. <laughs> Tonight, as intense downpours overwhelm towns and send rivers pouring over their banks, desperate rescues are underway. Near the normally dry capital city of Lima, dozens of people crowd onto rooftops above washed out streets. Zip lines being used to bring families and pets over fast rising water. Others are forming human chains to get to dry ground. Tonight, half of the country is declared a state of emergency. Officials say this is the worst flooding in Peru in nearly two decades, with much more rain still expected. Boy, tsunami! Uma, dova me, uma, dova me, uma. Boy, dova me, dova me. Boy! started taking everything up. My trash cans were flying everywhere. My tent was flying everywhere. I was kind of hanging on it, like almost like a monkey in a sense, trying to hold everything down. There is one video taken by Louisiana resident Danny Garceau on April the 1st. The video has garnered a great deal of attention. I would say that this is one of the most convincing captures of the star system that I have analyzed over the years. The brown dwarf in a very rare appearance as it orbits our sun in retrograde fashion. And there was also a series of images taken on March 16th and 17th, which are equally incredible, showing the presence of a celestial body. These images are posted on our Facebook page and can be viewed close up. And be sure to follow our page for daily updates on the Planet X Nibiru system leave a comment or a message, and as a source to share your images and videos. Fourth, Tuesday, 9 o'clock Mountain Time, 2017. What we're looking at is the Gulf of Mexico Rainbow Loop is what they call this. And you can still see a persistent disturbance down here in the Florida Panhandle. It's slowly moved across Louisiana, southern Mississippi, Alabama, and it's been hitting Florida and Georgia the past couple of days. 
And it was so intense in Georgia yesterday that they've gone ahead and declared ahead of tomorrow's storms because it's predicted to cause a lot of damage and destruction in southwestern Georgia tomorrow that they've declared a state of emergency right here in uh, Albany, or actually south of Albany, in Doherty County. A full-blown state of emergency in Doherty County ahead of the severe weather, and it hasn't even happened yet. And it's because the weather that they got yesterday was so bad, so strong, so intense, that they're not taking any chances. Here's what the uh, local news had to say about it right here. And you can see the maps of what they're predicting for tomorrow. They are in a uh, moderate to high tornado uh, path right through here. And Albany is right in the middle of it. Check it out. Here's what they've got to say. State of emergency has been declared for Doherty County ahead of tomorrow's storm. The National Weather Service shows Doherty County could possibly see strong, long track tornadoes with destructive wind gusts as high as 70 miles per hour. Now, these weather events could happen throughout the day tomorrow. And we want to tell you more on the details on what exactly a disaster declaration means. Number one, the county emergency operations plans will be activated. Number two, the emergency operations ordinances that Doherty County commissioners adopted will be operative. And number three, all of the relief we need will be asked for from the state of Georgia for the good of the life, property, and general welfare of the people in Doherty County. That's a good thing. It's um, Honestly, that is a good thing. But it's very telling of the times. The weather is getting just off the charts. Everywhere you look around the globe, there's some sort of um, wild weather going on. If it's not giant hail, it's strong winds, straight line winds, dust storms, tornadoes, floods, landslides, mudslides. It just goes on and on and on. And it doesn't stop. It only seems to intensify. So there's already a state of emergency in, a pl in, uh, in place in Doherty County, which is south of Albany, Georgia, right here, for tomorrow. And the storms haven't even hit yet. But they're brewing, and they know it. And based off of what it did yesterday, they're not taking any chances. Another for sign that this is in play. Record snow, blizzards, Newfoundland, eastern Canada, getting over 120 centimeters of snow. And for those of you in the U.S., 2.5 centimeters equals one inch. A couple images for you here. Snow up to the rooftops of homes. Now in Canada, when it's reported in the news as an unbelievable amount of snow, and this is in Gander, which also had record snows, Two years ago. Seems to be a trend in that area. Here's the actual depth of some of the snow on top of the cars. And all of you hearing about the melting sea ice. Oh, it's going to melt in and we'll use all the Northwest Passage. And it's definitely disappearing, the sea ice. Or so you've been told. Atlantic Ferry, stuck in sea ice off Cape Breton. This off the IceAgeNow.info newsfeed. Nova Scotia Ferry, stuck. They're not really sure when they can get it out. They're sending an icebreaker right now to try to escort it out of this slush pack ice. Image here for you of the escort ship trying to break it free right now and cut a channel through there. Cape Breton here on the map for you. Far Eastern Maritimes. A bit north of Halifax, Nova Scotia. Satellite image for you here. If truly all the sea ice was melting, you think further south latitudes would be the first place that it would disappear, not in the Arctic Circle, which they keep claiming. How can there be so much sea ice this far south if all the ice is disappearing in the north? How can there still be ice further south? This is just simple, commonsensical stuff.
Well guys, got three tornadoes today. It's a beautiful lightning and destroyed another window with hail, but more important news, we lost three storm chasers today. Uh, Kelly Williamson, Randy, the storm wranglers, were in an accident with uh, another storm chaser named Corbin from Arizona, I believe. I didn't know him, but Kelly and I were friends and uh, used to hang out and underneath the storms and talk about everything except the storms. I remember being in New Mexico with him last year and we were looking for arrowheads and didn't find any, but uh, we talked about getting barbecue and beer all the times, but we kept missing each other. Um, just last two days ago in Oklahoma, he and I got to hang out for a good 20, 30 minutes before getting all the funnel clouds. And uh, he, was, uh, he was a hard worker and he was a good storm chaser. He was just a good old boy, down to earth guy, and that's what made the Storm Wranglers TV show so good. And uh, and uh, I'll miss him. And my deepest condolences go out to the families of all of them. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, so I don't know what else to say, but rest in peace, guys.